Hey family, Pastor Jay Stone here. Just wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time to tune into our broadcast and watch our video. I hope the sermon blesses you. I hope it challenges you. I hope you get what you need to get through this week ahead. Listen, do me a favor. If this message blesses you, share it with a friend. Thank you all so much. Love you. We'll see you soon. Sit here and watch me struggle. You're going to sit here. 
bed and watch me be upset and you got peace while I'm the one that get no sleep at night. You the one can post all the good quotes and all that, but I'm the one sitting there trying to figure out how I'm going to eat my next meal. You the one sitting there talking about how good God is when I'm struggling to figure out if God is even real and can he hear my prayer. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I'm tired of having to do other folks' work for able-handed people. You're going to sit here and you're going to help me or you're going to leave me alone. Stop letting people commit you to works when they ain't willing to help you get dirty. Your past is calling you 
so strong that it's beginning to pull on you and the flashbacks are so surreal that you feel like you're living in the moment again. That's a seizure. You gotta be healed from that because that's trying to throw you back down when God has pulled you back up. So somebody look at somebody and tell them, I'm sorry I got in your way. Look at her and tell them, I'm sorry I got in your way. I'm sorry I loved you and got in your way because when I got in your way, I didn't know I was getting in God's way. And every now and again, when you step in trying to intervene, God will see you as an interruption. And whenever God sees you as an interruption, he knows how to slide you out the way. I look at somebody else and tell them, I'm sorry I got in your way. I was trying to cover you and didn't know I was killing you. I was trying to protect you and didn't know I was a parasite. I was trying to love on you, not understanding the assignment of why God had us connected in the first place. I'm sorry I got in way. Got Sister Paul, in 1844, Ross married a free black man named John Tuffin and took his last name. She took his last name and she changed her first name, taking on her mother's name. And in 1849, she was worried that the other slaves on the plantation was going to be sold, so she decided to run away. Watch this. I say, I want to tell you that God would permit you to grow up in something so that you would have a burning desire not to die in that same situation. You'll catch up next week. God will allow you to grow up in a position She had a burning desire to be free. So at any given cost, she decided to run away. I'm trying to figure out if there's somebody in here that say it may cost me something. I have to run for my life. Because I refuse to die the way I grew up. I grew up living from paycheck to paycheck, but I'm not going to die in that position. I grew up not knowing a real relationship with my father, but I'm not going to die in that position. I grew up not having a close connection but I'm not going to die in that position. I grew up not being faithful to God, but I'm not going to die in that position. Let me find somebody that will tell the truth this morning that the struggle really helped push me out of this place. Because there's some black folk in here that say I refuse to be in a struggle all my life. Like the devil is in a liar and a loser and a failure. Disconnect from that because if you don't disconnect. 
disconnect from it, you'll still be in your 40s and 50s singing the sad old song that you were singing in your teens and 20s. And I'm tired of seeing folks with so much potential on their life singing these sad songs as if God has not given them authority to conquer and overcome. Look at somebody tell them you're overcome. You're overcome. You're a conqueror. Matter of fact, you're more than a conqueror. Satan tried his best to discourage you. He tried his best to throw you off. But little did he know embedded in your DNA is the spirit of revival. And what is revival? Revival is a breaking out. Revival is a rebirthing. Revival is a charge of life. I wish I had some hope. And get life in their body. You find yourself still pulling a life from what God has released you from. And so whenever you are still trying to pull a life from what God has released you from, you begin to suffer because you can't continue to get the nourishment and nutrients that you need. So many of us are sitting in the house of God still suffering from a slave's mindset because we only come to church out of routine and ritual, not knowing that your spirit is faith. Not knowing that your body and your soul needs nourishment. And it's something about when you get in the presence of your other brothers and sisters, you begin to draw strength and wisdom and knowledge. But when you are a slave, you just do it because somebody told you to. But let me find somebody that says, I ain't doing this because somebody told me to. I'm doing this because I know what I need. Because the hype man is 
is just designed to get you started. And when he's got to go back home, let me tell you something. Some people are designed to go back to the master's house because if they don't get back to the master's house, they don't have enough faith to understand that God pulled me out of this for a reason. You thought God let you come to college just because he wanted you to get an education. It ain't about an education, baby. He was given an opportunity to come out from under and daddy's wings so that you can understand that God has put a wind under my wings and I can soar and I can grow and I can live life to the fullest and don't be so caught up with struggle until you feel like you gotta go back. Yes, yeah. Look at your neighbor and yeah. say, neighbor, what's back to? 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 Let that stuff go. Let that hurt go, sugar. Yeah, he wasn't no good. You know he wasn't no good. Let that hurt go. Yeah, that job was in pain.
anointed to lead struggle with insecurity the most. Uh, but Brianna, it's one thing to tell me to be confident in this very thing. But somebody gonna tell the truth and tell me this morning, some days I just don't believe I have it in me to pull this thing off. Uh, some days I wake up and I just don't believe uh, that God has heard my cry. That's why half y'all sitting there looking at me strange now. Pastor, you told me to shout last week and he didn't do it. You told me to shout last year and he didn't do it. He said, I'm waiting to hear oppression from you for real. Because whenever God's people are suppressed, he will raise a Moses up. Moses' name means to draw out. And my generation, they feel like they owe something. But we come from a lineage of people that says, even though I put in this struggle, the same God put me out is the same one that's going to put me in. It's the same one that's going to bring me out. So my, my generation don't quite understand it yet. And that's why I preach the way I do.
slaves. If you ain't careful, you can live a life of liberty and freedom and still live systematically, emotionally, and spiritually in slavery because freedom comes with access. If it was Monday night last week and I was at Power Hall, I tell the students, tell the neighbor you got access. What does that mean? I got access. My freedom has afforded me the opportunity to where doors were locked up for me. Whenever God freed me, I gave access to where it was once closed off for me. That's why you can have five jobs calling you at one time. Because God says, I freed you from the oppression of the love of money, and now I can give you access to an insurmountable income. Y'all are going to say nothing. Y'all are going to say amen.
much heartbreak on this side. There's too much negativity on this side. I don't know who's going to stop, but there's too many broke people on this side.